Who's my big boy? This is Tommy, guys. He clearly doesn't want to be in this video, but I just want to put him because you must know him. This is Tommy. Say hi, you boring dog. <laughs> He's so full of life. Don't get him wrong. I think he hates me. I really do. I really think he hates me. I'll see you in like a couple of uh, seconds. And that's all from Toby. <gasps> bye, 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 bye. In this video, I will be talking about books that remind me of fall and books that I'm probably going to read this fall. So without further ado, say, let's jump right into it. First book in my TBR list for this fall slash autumn is It by Stephen King. So I've been wanting lately to read something more horror because I I don't really read that kind of books, even though I love them, or at least I love the movies. So I really want to read something like that and this is super scary I think I've seen the movies both uh, versions and I can say that these books have been my childish nightmare for like years I couldn't go even like in the bathroom by myself when I was six years old so I think it would be really interesting to read this in case you don't know what this book is about I think I'll read you the plot because it really sums up perfectly the plot of the book and the atmosphere, so I'll be reading you this. Yeah, this could scary. <laughs> Derry, Maine is just an ordinary ordinary Derry, Maine is just an ordinary town, familiar, well ordered, for the most part a good place to live. It is a group of children who see and feel what makes Derry so horribly different. The storm drains in the sewers. It larks, taking on the shape of every nightmare, each one's deepest dread. Sometimes it appears as an evil clown named Pennywise, and sometimes it reaches up. Seizing, tearing, killing. Time passes and the children grow up, move away and forget, until they are called back once more to confront it, as it stares and coils in the sudden depths of their memories, emerging again to make their past nightmares a terrible present reality. <sighs> I've never really read any Stephen King books, so I would really love to see how he writes. So yes, this is the first book I will be reading this fall. Slash autumn. Depends on how you say it actually guys, okay, so next book series I will be reading this fall is The Fallen series by Lauren Kate. Uh, I've actually read this the first of these a couple of years ago, but I didn't continue the series after that for various reasons I didn't really enjoy it at that time. This is Toby who is whining to go outside so just wait a minute i'll go on. i were i was reading this i had been reading this a couple of days years ago but i left it uh, on the first book for i don't know why maybe i didn't like it at that time actually rem i remember that it annoyed me that she always had these two boys uh, pursuing her but since i love the atmosphere i'm probably reading these this fall i will give them the chance again and i'll read the first again because i don't think i remember anything at all so yeah the first story of this is this girl who is uh, close in this psychiatric yard i guess and of having killed a guy uh when this uh, place had caught on fire so uh, in the psychiatric yard she doesn't really remember doing that she just remembers this um shadows that are always where she is and in this psychiatric yard, she meets this guy, Daniel. So familiar, but she doesn't really remember setting his eyes on him, her eyes on him. So in this book, she's trying to figure out where she met him, how does she know him. And uh, the atmosphere is so gothic, and I so loved it. And it's um, dangerously exciting and darkly romantic. Fallen is a thrilling story about forbidden love. So, um... Really looking forward to reading this again because look at the cover. It's just amazing. Next book is Maybe For You by Jojo Moyes. So this is actually a well-known cichlid book. Uh, this talks about Lou Clark, who is a girl who has everything planned out in her life. But then she's trying to find a new work for herself and she's hired in this house. And she imagines she will have to tend to this patient who is an old man or I don't know what. Instead she finds this guy, Will Trainer, who is actually really young and really handsome and has been paralyzed from this uh, motorcycle accident he had had. And uh, this accident took away all his life and she can't, he can't move at all. So it really destroyed his life without even taking it properly. And he doesn't really have anything else to look forward to in his life until Lou comes into this um, chaos his life is. 
and uh, sheds light in this uh, dark tunnel that he dis that didn't really think he would find a way out. P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. I had mentioned this book again in one of my book hauls, I think, yeah. I'll probably be reading this um, this fall because I just imagine myself reading this um, when it's a bit chilly, a bit, just a bit, and with a blanket and with cozy pajamas and um, I just imagine the feeling and I imagine holding this book and crying. So we'll probably have a lot of tissues for this book as well. Um, so yeah, this will probably be the, f the one of the books I will be reading this fall, so I'm super excited for this because the movie is just so sad and I'm super ready to dive into this thing that will make me a crybaby! Faces by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the series, uh, Lady Midnight, and this is actually the part of the Shadowhunter Award. It's after the Mortal, Mortal Instruments and I've missed so much the Shadowhunter Award. I read the Shadowhunter, uh, the Mortal Instruments at May, I finished them the 15th of June, I think, and I've missed them so much ever since. And I kind of want to dive back to that word because it's just stunning. Is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. So I don't really know a lot about this book, but my mom said, uh, I told her to describe it with uh, a, f a phrase because it really um, um, attracted me, so I want to give it a shot and she actually proposed it to me and I want to know what it was about, but since the plot in the book actually sucked um, it wasn't uh, well written, I asked her to describe it with one phrase and she just said that myths always hide some truth. There's a line uh, within the myth of Dracula and um, it should be really interesting and oh look the pages are yellow so this is a bonus for this book and I'll probably be picking this up quite soon because um, it seems really really interesting and really really autumnish so I'll be seeing you baby uh, really soon. So those are the books I'm planning on reading this fall. I'm probably forgetting a lot of books uh, but never mind. Um, you can do nothing about that. So let's proceed with the books I will be telling you that remind me of autumn and leaves and chill evenings and pumpkins and Halloween. No, not Halloween. There will be another reader for that. All is Daughter of the Forest uh, by Juliette Marillier. I think that's how you call her. I don't know. So this book is actually retelling of the ta of the fairy tale The Six Swans, uh, which was. Um, uh, recollected by the Grimm brothers in the 1800s, if I'm correct, 1812, somewhere like, somewhere in that period of time, I'm not sure. So, um, this, in case you don't know the uh, story, it's about a girl whose brothers have been turned into swans and she must knit uh, this uh, shirt uh, to make turn back into themselves. But the tricky part is that these shirts are made from a normal wool or something, they're made from this kind of um, thorny thing, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it exactly, uh, which actually is really difficult to use and manage, so she will have to cope with that. And this book is beautiful reading because there is also a love story and it's just so beautiful, the atmosphere and everything in it, it's so magical and they just loved it so much. It's just stunning atmosphere. Okay, so I really recommend this book uh, if you like that kind of books. It's so beautiful and I read it last year and I'm really glad. This book is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Um, this went this so much with uh, this period of time because I read it last year, no, two years ago in October and I just loved it because I don't know, in this book it also talks about Halloween, so it was just so beautiful when I read it and I just loved it and I read it after school, so it was just like a treat for me and I just... chef's kiss, you know, just chef's kiss. About this witch uh, who is in a kind of denial about her powers and is also a historian and um, when she goes to the Bodleian Library in Oxford to find an artifact she needs, 
Ashmole 782, um, and a manuscript that has been searched from all the creatures of the world for like centuries, she doesn't really have any trouble finding it, um, instead opposed to all of the other creatures. Um, and uh, immediately she is followed by a vampire, Matthew Clermont, who wants to help, let's say help. So I deeply recommend this for Halloween because uh, there are witches, vampires, warlocks, um, what else, demons, Halloween, um, magic spells, there is everything you could want and it's so nice and it's so, it's big and you win, we love big books. The book that reminds me of Autumn is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is a classic novel by one of the Bronte sisters and it's just so atmospheric. This book has such a beautiful atmosphere. The moors, the wind, the cursed characters, everything is so beautiful and gorgeous and so depressing for fall, which I believe is a great period to be depressed. So I'll, in case you don't know what it is about, I'll read you just the plot behind because I don't want to ruin it with what I will say. So itself, Wuthering Heights is set on the bleak pen in moors, a fitting backdrop to this story of love, torment and revenge, and a landscape familiar to Emily Bronte. Heathcliff is a foundling, adopted and raised as one of the Ironshock children. With this act of charity, the seeds of ardent love and jealousy are planted. Catherine Earnshaw becomes devoted to Heathcliff, while her brother Hindley always views him as a rival for Wuthering Heights. Their passions grow to involve their neighbours, the Lintons, spilling over to affect the next generation, until Catherine and Heathcliff are united for eternity. This is just so damned and so beautiful, and it's so I just can't explain how atmospheric this book is, and you'll understand when you read it. This book is Paul Dark, uh, the Paul Dark series by Winston Graham. This book actually reminds me of, um, of Autumn so much because it is established in Cornwall. There are all the cliffs and that amazing sea and it's just so beautiful and stunning, all the landscape that uh, is quite often described in this book. So, in case you don't know what this series is about, this is just the first book, Ruspel Dark. Uh, it is about Ruspel Dark who returns from war with no heritage, no fiancé, no anything. Um, he doesn't really know what to do in this Cornwall that has nothing else to, that, to give to him. So he starts to adapt in this new Cornwall where nothing is as he left it, as we said, and he meets new people. He meets a girl who starts to shed light again <laughs> uh, to his darkness this time and that will change his life completely and he doesn't really even know that when he meets her. The last book that reminds me so much, like this might be the book that reminds me of this period of time more than any other book, so I know this book is really known, uh, but I had to comprehend it because like it just reminds me so much of Autumn and I couldn't miss it. So this, the book, Twilight by Stephanie Meyers. Mayer. I always mess it up. My god. Okay, so it just reminds me of rain, chilly weather, um, mold, and I don't know, that and so much of autumn. And I just love uh, reading it and watching the movies in this period of time, which I had I haven't really done yet, so well to do that. Um, I know what it's about, even though it's really known, but I'll be saying it for those of you who might not know what it's about. This book is about Bella, who goes again um, to Forks to live with her father, while her, uh, while her mother is on this kind of honeymoon, I guess, with her new husband. Like, what? Like, oh, you sent your daughter away to go for a trip with your new husband? How sensitive could you be? Like, oh my god, I would, like, spit her... Anyway, to Forks, where she actually hates it, uh, but she meets the Cullens. Um, so she meets Edward Cullen, who is one of uh, Dr. Cullen's um, children, adopted children, and he really isn't like any other boy she's ever seen. Like, she, he is so unique and strange, 
and she is strangely drawn to him. In this depressing atmospheric forks that never really stops raining, she finds this uh, guy who is really a mystery to her but she can't help but feel more drawn to him day by day. And she really is entangled in the story which is kind of a mess. But it will turn out to be quite the love story. Also, just see this. Uh, the front page is the woods where they climb. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the movie, but at, at one uh, scene they climb these beautiful trees. And it just reminds me so much of this period. And oh my god, it's just beautiful the, for this period of time. I just recommend it for now. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope found some books you would like to read. Uh, let me know and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! This time to y'all.